everyone. Welcome to my live stream. It looks like Exy is already here. <laughs> Hello. I see your message in the chat. Oh, Viping. Kawaii. <laughs> Exy was the adorable uh, little like ghosty at a music show with like it's adorable. It's just jumping up and down with this cute little face. <laughs> Exy, how are you? Thank you for joining me, like, right away. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm going to show my drink real quick. Getting my delicious lemonade open now. I'm still thirsty. I ate a bunch of crackers and peanut butter, so I'm <laughs> really thirsty now. These delicious corn crackers. I got them in my vegan snack box that arrived today. I've gotten them before and I was like, oh man, I know what I'm going to do with these. And I, so and now I'm really thirsty. So get my lemonade ready to go. Okay. Makeup stream time. Woo. I have actually got up my reference images. I got them both from Pexels. So it's free uh, stock images. And I made a small donation to each of the people who uh, posted these images. So these are the reference images I'm going to use for my uh, Griffin today because the Inktober 52, which is the, the makeup stream that we're doing, Inktober 52 uh, prompt is caught. And when I thought of that, I thought this weekend I saw an osprey fly overhead with a fish. It had just caught a fish. So the osprey was just flying over me and the little fish was like, no, but you know, osprey, ospreys need to eat. So there's no, there's no, uh, osprey McDonald's. So I'm like, good for you, osprey. I think that it's likely because the river, uh, it was flying away from the river. I don't know why it would fly so far away rather than just, uh, sit in a tree and just eat the fish right there next to the river. So I was thinking maybe that it was bringing the fish to its little babies. So um, anyway, that inspired me when I was thinking about what am I going to do for cot? So I'm going to make this griffin using these two reference images that I chose. Although I just realized I didn't actually open them up big separately for myself. So let me get... Okay, now I've got it open. And okay, i got to change my OBS so it's a little smaller. But since these are uh, reference images, uh, well, stock photos. I call them reference images because those they are to me. Uh, but they're stock, stock photos, and so that's why I've got them up here on my stream this time. So I'm going to be using these two, put these two together to create the cot. So the griffin has caught a fish, and I guess it's going to be a really big fish or a small griffin, because I figure I'll just make the fish as big as it is in this picture. Um... And it's so interesting. And there's so many amazing pictures of ospreys catching fish too, but, um, yeah, anyway, I wanted to make sure to use one that was, uh, I didn't want to have any, any trouble with any copyright issues or anything that I go to the free, the free reference sites, the free stock image sites, find my images. Okay. So here is my kit for anybody who has not seen one of these before. I'll introduce all the items. The Inktober official moleskin sketchbook. I don't know if they'll have these again this year, but it's, uh, I think that it's a nice sketchbook. So if anybody's thinking about getting one, then I say just go for it because it's really nice. Um, oh, pencil sharpener to go with my pencil. And so everything except for the pencil and pencil sharpener i got all at the inktober retreat last year so that's why i'm using them this time so here's a kit with five mild liner markers double ended and then five um fine liner pens they're called the sarasa is what it's called for that line of fine liners it's all the zebra brand and these are also zebra brand brush pens they both have medium sized brush tip on this side and then the red one has a small brush on the other side. Is that everything? That's everything. Okay, let me just get this out of the way. My little storage bag. Okay, have another, another sip. It's interesting. I'm having like a weird feeling because the, uh, so while I was snacking, I just watched a whole bunch of cinema therapy videos on YouTube 
I watched like all of their Lord of the Rings ones. So I've been listening to people talking for like the past hour or longer, maybe hour and a half. And so it's kind of weird because now I'm listening to people talking, but it's me. <laughs> There's, so the, the, it's weird. It's kind of the same experience. People are talking, but the people is me. So I'm having like a weird, a weird experience <laughs> right now. Like the talking level is the same, but the source is different. Okay, I'm just making sure that this is. So I don't know if I, I point it out very often, but this is not white paper. It's like ivory paper. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you want like bright white paper, I don't know if they make, make one of these moleskin sketchbooks that come with the bright white paper. But I think that this ivory paper is really nice too. Okay, so let me, okay good, my pencil tip is nice and sharp. Let me zoom in on my image a little bit, my reference image. And I'm gonna make it a little bigger on the screen too. Okay. Oh, I gotta make it a little smaller. The wings are getting cut off. Okay, there we go. It's the same size for you on the stream. Oh, I gotta get another drink. I need to not eat a whole bag of crackers all at once. <laughs> They're so good with a bunch of peanut butter on them. Okay, so I'm making a griffin. And actually, it's... With this reference image, the way that the chest is coming forward, it seems it's so easy to just see exactly where I want to add in. Just basically replace the tail with the dog. And of course I will be using my imagination to flip the dog so it's going the other way. But let's see, so the wingspan is just huge though. It's like, okay, so I'm holding my pencil up to my screen. So I have my monitor over here I'm looking at. I'm holding my pencil up to measure the length of the body of the osprey from the, the beak all the way to the tail. And then if I take that, so the back wing is that same length. So it's just as long. And then the front wing is actually even longer. It's like another quarter or another third again is long okay so keeping that in mind I gotta keep the body kind of small let me let me see something else so from where the the body becomes wings down to the bottom of the fish so I'm holding my so this is the length and now how tall is that? So from the top of the body where the body becomes wing, it's like two. So from the top of the wing, from the where the wing comes out of the body down to the bottom of the fish is this length. It's one, two to the top of the back wing. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. I know it's hard because I can't like show you on the images that are floating, floating over here. <laughs> But anyway, that means I need to leave a lot, of, a lot of room and not make the body of the griffin too big in order to keep the wings on. And I don't have to. In fact, I think I won't. I'll have the wings be so big they're coming off of the page. Like as if we are zoomed in. We are zoomed in on the, uh, on the mate. So we're not getting the whole picture. Like the griffin is so big that it fills the frame and the, the wings are actually out, out of here. Okay, so let's do it then. Let's, so we gotta have the fish. Let's see. Let's do the main shape of the body like right about here. And that means the fish is gonna be right about here. Down where, what will become the griffin's arms? For the osprey, it's its legs. But in a griffin, the legs of the bird become the arms of the griffin. So. And then the way it's flying, the body is actually pretty flat. The wings beating, uh, they're about to beat down, so the shoulders are up above the head. So let's see. 
if we do have so that length from here to here okay so that is this length goes up to about here so I'm measuring on my page and then I'm doing a, a comparative measurement on the uh, on the reference image so almost the whole wing the whole back wing will fit just those very end feathers that are turning up um, let's see if I can point those right there those ones are just barely caught up, uh, cut off uh, it also goes way far forward so let's do another measurement I think we did this one before though the length of the body is about the same length as the wing. yes so this so the wing actually has to go way the heck over here too okay so we're just gonna whoop just take it straight forward it's come from about the mid part of the head and so we'll just go like this it doesn't have to be like perfect or anything but I want to get the the overall um, the relative size of the pieces Ooh, I know there's a term for that and I can never remember it's not perspective it uses a P Oh, uh, what is it called? Uh, proportions. Haha. <laughs> yes, the proportions. Okay, taking another drink of the delicious sweet and tart lemonade. Okay. Got the back wing done. Right now the body is just this little, like, sausage. <laughs> okay, so let's see. This is about where the head is. So I'm going to start adding more shapes and then this is the chest. The chest actually comes down a significant amount. Surpr uh, surprise to me, I mean, I, I draw a lot of birds and yet I feel like I don't know anything about what they look like. <laughs> so, like, wow, it actually, you know, it, the, the bottom of the head is rather flat and then it's just like, boom, down into the strong it's just like boom. you can see the muscles are about to go boom with the wings but anyway <laughs> okay so the shoulder comes out of the head and then here we go so where is this turn there's this like sort of bend in the wing along the front wing on the top side and it's like right about here and then if I look at it this way that point is right where uh, like the leg is going backward it's like the ankle the ankle part of the leg so that let's see if this is the chest like this and then this leg which is now an arm because this is a griffin it's coming down like here and so this point is where that that sort of angle should be there and then we'll just connect these boom Okay, and it still rises up though. It's not like this. It's rising up and off the page. Okay. Now the tail, I will not draw at all because that's going to be a dog. I wanted to find a wolf, but I couldn't quite find what I was looking for. There was plenty of pictures of, of dogs jumping, so. And dogs are practically wolves anyway. Okay, so now I'm just drawing some basic shapes to represent. All right, so the claws on the back foot, there's two gripping the fish from the front, and then there's two wrapped around the back of the fish. So there's four claws, but they have this amazing dexterity to like turn, like I don't have that dexterity. <laughs> My hand does not do that. So it turns around and these two turn around and can Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> anyway, it's really cool. I love I love seeing it in action. So it's gripping, and then this one is also gripping. There, got that hand on there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I barely started. X he says a masterpiece. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I am pretty happy with this little sketch of the foot. I am excited to to have the have it uh, gripping that fish and it's bringing it home to its family providing some food for its little baby grifflets or whatever 
I have not decided what I want to call baby griffins. Like, I, I've actually brainstormed it for my novel. Like, are they grifflets, or are they pups, or are they chicks, or... You know, there's so many different interesting words we can use. Well, I think grifflets is pretty cute, so we'll use that for today. Okay, let's do that other. The other uh, hand, what's going to become a hand, is gripping the head and into the gills. It is sad for the fish, but again, it's no Griffin McDonald's. It's no Osprey McDonald's, so. <laughs> There's no uh, vegan grocery store for the Ospreys. So I don't hold it against them. They gotta eat. They gotta eat. You gotta eat the fish. Especially Osprey is actually only eats fish. Only hunts fish. That's why some places call it a seahawk. <laughs> only eats fish. Okay. Okay, so I've got hands, I've got the start of the face, the start of the wing. I guess I can finish up the wing because then the then I can add the dog part of the body on the back behind the wing. I did not select this picture because of it, but I realize now this is an excellent reference for making into a griffin because it's just this seamless line where the wing connects to the leg and then you just like Ignore the stuff that's behind that. Put in whatever animal you want to be the back half. Like you don't have to do very much uh, imagination stuff. Just, just uh, forget about the tail. Ignore the tail <laughs> and add your mammal of choice. Okay, so and uh, are we on time? We're all right on time. Take it very far. I don't remember if I asked Exy, are you doing all right? Hope so. Week's almost over. Actually, it's in a Friday now, right? Your weekend is practically here. I know we just chatted yesterday, though, because of the weird, the weird schedule this week. But I like to, I like to ask. I like chatting with people, so. <laughs> All right, I am not counting. If I was doing a really uh, detailed, dedicated illustration, I would be counting these feathers. I would be literally counting how many feathers does it have because depending on the species, they will have different amounts of feathers and different amounts of the different types of feathers. But this is just Inktober 52, so it's mostly practice. So I'm just trying to get the overall effect, not worrying too much about the precise anatomy. Oh, good. <laughs> Exit says, yeah, I'm all right. How are you? I'm good, too. Yay, we're all good here. I actually... Oh, I just realized it's getting cloudy outside. That is so nice. I bet it's still crazy hot outside, but... So I'm even better because I just realized that the sun is not blasting in here, and... I don't know. I don't like the sun. It ruins my day. <laughs> I know the sun is necessary for life, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Thank you for that question. Exy says, will the Monday streams be permanently moved to Tuesday? Yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and do that. I'm going to move them to Tuesday from now on starting next week. Because it's just not been working out with the cleaning schedule. I mean, obviously... For ever since I started streaming last year, it was not a problem, but these last few months, the cleaning is happening later and later and later and later in the day. And so I'm tired of having to be like, am I going to be able to stream? I'm going to have to reschedule. I think it's better. Even though I really like the um, how symmetrical it feels to have Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It feels so good. But having to reschedule and be like, oh, am I going to be able to reschedule? Because it's not like I always had the space to reschedule it. So, yeah, I'm just going to have it on Tuesday because my Tuesday afternoon appointment has been rescheduled. Um, so that is open. 
and if I do it on Tuesday, then I will not have to worry about rescheduling because of something else. So, yes, the very long answer to your simple and direct question is, yep, yeah, Monday streams are going to be Tuesday starting next week. And I'm not sure if I'll ever go back from that because the, the cleaning has always been every other Monday. I, and I guess it's like I don't feel I can trust that even if for some reason it starts getting done early again, there's no guarantee that it won't become late again after that. So I think it's just easier. Even though I have to give up my lovely symmetrical schedule. I love that. Symmetry Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But it'll be the same time of day and everything, so hopefully that'll be all right. And since I've been rescheduling it to Tuesdays half the time anyway, <laughs> it's like I've already been doing it, like, you know, Tuesday. It was so funny because so many of the times I had to reschedule, I either didn't have my Thursday appointment or my Tuesday appointment had just gotten canceled. So it was always this, like, fortuitous circumstances that allowed me to reschedule but there was always the chance that there would just be like no time to reschedule I don't I don't like that I like to be consistent so that everybody can be like oh yeah it's Tuesday I know that there will be a live stream kind of like I guess like it's like this is my TV show but it's on Twitch and it's not scripted or anything. Not scripted, not edited, live. Live TV show. Let's see, it's interesting that Osprey doesn't have, so unlike Eagle, I mean, Osprey is like its own group of uh, raptors, as far as I have seen for description, you know, cause there's like eagles, hawks, falcons, um, there might be something else, but I believe Osprey is counted as its own thing. And I could be I could be wrong. I could be remembering that wrong, but I feel like it's categorized as its own little special type of raptor. But what I was thinking was like this little hook on the beak does not come down nearly so much as a like an eagle. Whenever I've drawn the eagles, I'm like, dang, that is like wow, it's like three inches long. <laughs> this huge, huge beak. Okay, well, I guess I better draw the fish first because I think that the fish will be in front of the legs that I have these, this lovely leaping, leaping dog with the long legs coming out and the tail going wee. And um, I think the fish will be in front. So I'll, I better draw this, this sad fishy, sad, sad fishy. It goes to to become a, a food for the more little osprey griffins. I think because I see ospreys so much, even the pe peregrine falcon is my favorite raptor, but I see ospreys so much just, even though I live in the city and everything, but we live next to a river and there are ponds and lakes stuff here, and so there's lots of water. And actually see ospreys quite a bit like I spotted one several years ago and I was like oh man what is that like I could see it with my naked eye and I was able to look it up later because I could see it so clearly and I was like oh that's so cool and now I just see them everywhere like every year I see at least a couple without even trying just like the one that flew over me this weekend it was just like flying across the road <laughs> just carrying a fish so anyway, uh, Peregrine Falcon's my favorite, but I love Ospreys a lot too. They don't know, but they are, they influence my life. They bring joy to my life whenever I see them flying around. I've heard them too. I've seen one like perched in a tree, uh, making noise. I could not, I could not tell you what the noise is like. <laughs> I cannot make an Osprey sound, but. I, I remember that happened before I was doing a long, like a half marathon training run. 
down the green belt along the river, and it was just sitting in the tree and making its noises. And such a uh, such a pleasant addition to the experience of doing a run down the river. I hear this bird of prey just doing, saying whatever it's saying. I don't know what it's saying. I can't speak. I can't speak, Osprey. Okay. I think I caught all the fins that I can see. There's the two, I think these are called pectoral fins. And then there's definitely one poking out on this side. I don't see it on this side, but it's probably flopped against the body or maybe pinned down by this, uh, by the claw here. But then there's also this one on the bottom on the back. Okay. Oh, and here's the other gill is right here. It's kind of closed. Okay. Now we can add the claws, digging into the fish to grip it. And you can actually see where the claw is pulling the skin of the fish and the, the skin is wrinkled under the claw because it's gripping it nice and tight. And then these back ones gripping around the back of the fish. There. And I love these strong, sturdy legs. And you can just see this like bulging, it's a strong, strong bird. You can see the little bulging muscles in the, in the legs here. Okay, and then the front leg. Or, well, it's like it's the back leg, but it's on the front of the fish. I've got the claws already on there, so I just gotta get the, the fingers on the claws. And I can see now that you can see one of those, one of the four uh, fingers gripping on this, this side, just right here. Okay. And then the, the other one on the back side is right about here. Okay, I think, okay. It was a tiny bit, there's so much going on right here. I was a tiny bit confused about what was going on with my sketch, but I think I've got it. And again, it's a super buff. This bird is ripped. Well, I'll uh, hold up this fish and claws. Been working on that for the last little bit. Done with that, let's add the puppy part onto the back. Oh, I guess I'll show you the face too. And the wings. And so we gotta add the puppy part on the back half. So I actually have to switch my reference image. So give me a second. And zoom it in. I thought about trimming these images, but I didn't have time, so I just gotta zoom in and move it around until I get to the spot I wanna see. So I've gotta use my imagination to flip this. But it's not too bad, it's almost a straight line. There's just like the thigh, and then the, so let's see, what is it? Yeah, it's like the thigh, and then the lower leg, and then the foot with the toes. So it's just basically three pieces. One, one, two, three. But if we're flipping it, one, two, three. So it's almost like a Z, like a Z shape, but you pulled the Z almost straight. Okay. And we want the leg to be about the same size as the arms so that it makes sense as a griffin. So this one comes down at this angle, the thigh comes down at this angle, then the the lower part of the leg goes like this, and then the foot part is that same angle again as the thigh, but just lower. Okay. 
And then the foot. I love this with dog feet and like in other animals too, how it the foot part goes comes out and it's almost like a shovel shape where the toes are. And then with this reference, you can see the back leg up a little higher. It's got that same like shovel thing going on. Okay, now just to add a little bit of details. So I'll just go ahead and use this border collie. It's got the fluffy fur on the back of the thigh, but it's smooth on the front down to the knee. And down to the foot. And then the little tootsies. And the, the heel of the foot has this little rise in it. Like this little bump comes up. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> XC says, looking perfect. Yay, thank you. I'm glad you think so. So much Griffin practice. It's interesting. I've actually drawn uh, my birthday Griffin piece were Osprey Griffins too, and I made the cake a fish shape. <laughs> but I still don't know how to draw an Osprey without looking at a reference picture. I can recognize one when it's flying around in the air, but I definitely have to look. And interestingly, these two feet on the dog are, seem to both be curved inwards because the lower foot, you can't see the paw pads on the bottom because it's turned in away from the viewer. And then on the back foot, you can see the paw pads because again, it's turned in, which means it's towards the viewer. So that's an interesting. That means when it's jumping, the feet turn in. Or it's like they turn in like this. So draw this little pop hats for the little puppy foot. Griffin puppy. Okay, and this part is getting a little messy, so I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. The the side closer to the viewer. Exy, you have anything fun going on this weekend? Have you been playing Baldur's Gate still? I remember, I can't remember where, but I remember somebody else was talking about it after we talked about it on uh, last week. Or was it last week? Was it month? No. Oh, I think we talked about it last week, but it definitely came up somewhere else. And I was like, oh, I heard about that before because of Exy. <laughs> it made me think of you. There, that's, oh, uh, that's much more, that's much more clear what's going on. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go back to my Osprey picture. Oh, Wolf is here too. Hello, Wolf. How are you? Yay, thank you for joining me. That's a pretty dog. It is a uh, stock stock photo that I got from Pexels and I did a donation to the person, but it was, you don't have to do a donation, but Pexels is a cool site where you can get the free stock photos. So I got that as a reference and it is a beautiful dog. I'm using it for the, as you can see for the, back half of my griffin um i realize i need to add the tail on here so i've got these nice legs but let's add the tail so the tail will be it's actually not going to show up very much because it's going to be in between the wings 
but this border collie has got the really nice long furs so I'll at least add that border collie osprey griffin Oh, cool. XC says, I want to do a couple streams this weekend. I'll be making world building stuff. I want it to be recorded. Are you going to stream on Twitch? I can follow your channel. I can't guarantee I'll watch because I just, I just, it's so weird. I stream, but I don't watch streams. So I'll be honest about it. But I'll totally follow your channel. And I don't know if you're doing it on Twitch, though. If you're doing it on YouTube, I can follow there, too. I have YouTube. You know I have YouTube. <laughs> oh, well, it says similar to my girl, but that is a tricolor. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because you shared your uh, puppy picture in the Discord. I remember. Oh, I believe I... Oh, there we go. I did not switch back to my Osprey picture. There we go. There we go. Okay, excellent. Exy says, I believe you already did. Okay, good. I already got you. Okay, now I'm just adding... How are we on time? Not too much time, so let's pick up the pace a little bit. So now I'm going to add some lines to indicate feathers, but even more than just indicating feathers, indicate the shape of the wings and the volume of the wings. So as I said earlier, I'm not counting feathers even though that would be something I do for a bigger illustration project. This is just a practice drawing, so I am, okay, I gotta move my screen. My the, the neck of my lamp is blocking this part of the wing. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just making general shapes. Not worried about precisely depicting the anatomy. Just about getting the overall. And so like adding these curved lines here helps make it look like it's a thicker thing, not like a flat piece of paper. Because in reality, it is a flat piece of paper. This is just a flat piece of paper. But I'll use the lines to give it more shape and dimension. Okay, sweet. Got that one. And so this part, seeing the under part of the wig and it's a lot more detailed, where there's a lot more going on. Because there's multiple colors. There's a light color and then dark color and that's actually how I can recognize the Ospreys so easily where I am because this pattern is so recognizable so I'm just on the ground of course but I look up and I can see and I'm like ah oh, it's an Osprey I know it's an Osprey this light and dark pattern that they have okay and then this is another group of feathers here and then there's these ones coming out here. And they curve up. And there's these longer ones too, of course. Yeah, that's pretty good. Some little feathers you can see displaced by the way the, the legs are moving. And sort of like a collar almost of feathers where the neck goes down and becomes the chest and then these really tiny feathers on this edge of the wing oh my laundry is done drying do -de -de -do -de -de -do. that's what that singing is it's my dryer when we got a new washer and dryer when we moved into this house, I wanted the singing ones. I was like, I must have one of those singing ones. I love the happy singing home appliances.
Yep. <laughs> Wolf says, you can tell it's an osprey because of the way that it is. They're so, so unique. I said this earlier already, but I'm pretty sure there are categories in their own group of types of raptors. Osprey gets its own group. It's not an eagle. It's not a hawk. It's not a falcon. It's a own unique thing. Okay. There's only about 20 minutes left, so I'm just going to let that be good for the pencil sketch. Let's move on to the inking, and I'm going to use uh, my brush pen to hurry the inking along. I'm just going ahead and using the thicker end too. So for the claws here, I'm just doing one big swipe big swipe of the pen and letting it taper. Fins on the fish. I'm letting these lines on the fins purposefully sort of and in a dry, br br dry brush effect, swiping it really quickly because they're actually very translucent in the reference. So hopefully by doing it like that, I can sort of indicate that using black ink. how much of this part on the head is lifted up because of that's just the way the fish is and those are all the gills or if it's being torn open by the by the talons that is just interesting to me oh yeah wolf says do you do illustration for work yeah my my main projects all involve the illustration so I am, my biggest project is an illustrated novel series. I'm just working on the first draft for the first one right now. So I haven't done any actually drawings for it yet. Definitely no full illustrations, but I definitely want it to be illustrated by the end. So that's one thing. And, um, I'm also working on, oh, you've seen uh, the, the onomatopoeia cows image. It's part of an art book that I'm working on. That was started as my capstone project for my illustration degree. So that's another thing. I'm hoping that when I finish enough animal onomatopoeia, so that will be number seven when I'm done with it, of the animals that I'm doing that I'll be able to put it together into a presentable format and get it published or else um, do like a Kickstarter or something, you know, I want to get that published. I wanted a pretty book that also teaches you Japanese <laughs> or, and I wanted it to be like, oh, you could also learn English from it if you speak Japanese because it's like bilingual. So it's just like, has the sounds in both languages, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, that's another illustration project that I'm working on. And then the newest one, I'm going to start on, I mean, I've already started. I've started research and brainstorming. I'm going to 
make a illustrated vegan anime food cookbook. Because, like, the thing is, like, oh, why does anime food always look so good? <laughs> and I've been, like, I'm like, why are there no vegan anime cookbooks? <laughs> I want to make the vegan anime food. And so, you know, they always tell you, okay, if it doesn't exist, then do you make it? It's like, you know what? I will do that. So, like, I have, um, I'm going to take a little course in vegan nutrition and, um, to, you know, to make sure that I can make, because I'm pretty, pretty, uh, I cook a lot. It's a hobby to cook for me, but I've never, like, made a recipe. I've never made a cookbook or anything, so, because I'd like my recipes to be not healthy in, like, a, in a, like, way, <laughs> but healthy in, like, you're going to get basic nutrients out of this as well especially because a lot of um so like i'm thinking of like the the tonkatsu bowl that so many characters like so uh yuri and from yuri on ice uh loves the tonkatsu bowl but he he like so the beginning of the anime it's like oh you gained a bunch of weight and you can't skate because you're out of shape so you're not getting any tonkatsu bowls <laughs> until you get back in shape and that just, that's just like the first episode or something, but, and then, uh, Midoriya Izuku Deku from My Hero Academia loves him and stuff, and so, like, these are characters that need nutrition, because they're, like, heroes or they're athletes, so, yeah, uh, that's, uh, like, one of the first things on my list is to get the knowledge but I already have ideas, and and I want it to be illustrated because I think that that would be fun and different, not just to have the photos, but it'll be like anime food because it's gonna look like delicious anime food illustrations. So yeah, again, a very long answer to a simple question. <laughs> yes, I do illustration for work. Oh yeah, like I would love. If anybody wanted to try, you know, like, test my recipes or whatever. And I figured I'd start by just posting them on my blog. Like, I don't want to make a bunch of recipes and then put it in a book and then, like, try to sell it. Like, I would rather just, like, make a recipe, test it a bunch of times, and have some people test it. And then do the illustration and make it all nice. And I, I want to make the recipes really easy because I have some quibbles with other uh cookbooks and i'm like why why do they do it like this they're making it so hard like it's making it inaccessible to people who aren't used to cooking or who uh, don't have that much time or you know stuff like that so i want to like address that kind of stuff when i design my recipes i want it to be easy and have nutrition and have be delicious and everything so yep if you are ever interested it'll be on my blog someday but I only have one day a week, two hours, one day a week right now to work on that. So it'll probably be a while <laughs> before my first recipe is up there. But yep, those are the things I'm working on. And I can't wait until I'm done uh, with my... I gotta switch back to the puppy reference. So right now on my blog, I'm doing a series of posts sharing my adventures in Japan this year but once I'm done with that I'm gonna go back to working on my Griffin my Griffin novel that's why I started drawing Griffins for Inktober because I want my the illustrations in my Griffin novel to be black and white because one that makes them faster so I can make more illustrations and then two that's a lot easier to print in a book just like logistically it's way easier to print in a book uh black and white versus doing a colored one like it's a lot cheaper and you can do it eh, anyway <laughs> it's way better to have the interior illustrations be black and white oh i think it's my personality <laughs> wolf says what makes your time so limited it's because i want to do all the things and then 
I don't have time, so I've figured out a system where I work a little bit on a lot of things. So I work on my physical health, like I work on, um, I do workouts uh, regularly throughout the day because also I have chronic back pain from my previous job. So I can't sit for really long periods. I mean, I can, but then it's terrible. <laughs> so I have it like all broken up and I, I do like yoga in the middle of the day and then I, I work on my blog, I work on um, my illustration projects, I do live streaming, <laughs> so that's why, it's because I have my hand in lots of different pots. But I like it this way because I never get bored and I, since I figured out a, way, a balanced way to do it, it's actually really nice to make a little bit of progress on everything. I used to work in a way where I would just focus on one thing all day long. And yeah, like I got stuff done faster, but then I would just be like dead and it would take me forever to get, uh, to get started again on something else, you know? I would be totally drained, way more drained than if I would have just done it slower. So my motto is slow and steady. <laughs> slow and steady wins the race. So that's why I sometimes I'm still tempted I'm still tempted to be like, mm, I could just drop everything else and focus on this one thing. But no, I like I like to do a little bit of a lot of things. And I've definitely stuck to projects better too, because back when I would just work on something, like a marathon work on stuff. I would burn myself out and never want to work on that project anymore. So like any big project, uh, like writing a multi-chapter story or something, it would just never happen. And those, those projects have been long left behind because the manuscript I'm working on right now, this first draft is not the first time I've tried to write a chapter story, <laughs> but I just couldn't stick it out before. Oh, you're welcome. Wolf says, cool, cool, thanks for sharing. You are welcome. Definitely uh, works better for me this way. It does suck that it takes forever to get anything done because it feels like I have nothing to show for it for a long time. But then finally I'm like, yeah, I finished this thing. And it seems like nothing because it took so long that it just seems like it materialized <laughs> out of thin air. I like this back wing because it's just all these black feathers. So I don't have to worry about paying attention to the pattern. I can just fill it in with brush strokes. I am doing the brush strokes trying to Trying to, again, get that sense of the thickness of the wing and the direction of the feathers. Even the shape of the feathers. Oh, that would be cool. I love pixel art. It's like on Habitica, I always am seeing the pixel art that people do for the quests and stuff and the, and the pets on there and the, the prizes and everything. Wolf says, I burn out the same way. I'll have to try that out. I keep saying I want to get back into pixel art. Yeah, something that really helped me came from a habit building book that I read. I think it's called The Power of Habit. I'm looking at it right now. It's on my bookshelf. Pretty sure it's that one. Or else it was its sequel, which is called Smarter, Faster, Better. What's the author? Charles... Do Hig, I think. It's really small. I can't read it for sure. But anyway, the idea was to build a habit, start with the tiniest possible thing that it's so small that you'd never have any reason you couldn't do it. And then if you start with that, if you can get yourself to do that one teeny tiny itty bitty thing that it's like there's just no way you'd never be able to, there's no way you could trick yourself out of doing it. 
once you actually do it, there's so there's then this other principle that can stack on top of it, which is like once you actually start, it's easier to keep going than to stop. So you like trick yourself into starting by making the goal so small that you could definitely do it. So like the idea is like say you want to go for walks. You want to go for a walk every day, but you can't get yourself out the door. So like the the thing that's so easy that you can't possibly deny it is like I'll just open the door and step outside and close the door behind me and that's it. I'm not going to actually go on the walk. No, I'm just going to literally just step outside my door. And then that way, if for some reason that really is all you can do, then you can still feel... Oh, Aoife wants out. Hold on. That's weird. Aoife never wants out. She really wants out. Okay, go on. Aoife is my dog. <laughs> She's my big dog. Chappie was in here too, and she was like, wait... You're leaving, Aoife? I'm going too. Anyway. Yeah, so if you want to get into pixel art, I'd say find out what is the tiniest possible thing. Like, I don't know what program you use, but like open the program. And that's all you have to do. And if that's all you did that day, success. And then you just keep building on from there. That, re that idea really does help me. And I think about that. I'm like, oh, what's the smallest thing I could do? Okay, so, yeah, so the top part of the wing is not really in here. So mostly the light colored feathers on the wing that's depicted here is these couple of rows. So I think I can safely just fill all this in real quick. I'm leaving little bits undone on purpose because there are like the tips of some of these feathers have like a white edge to them or like little bits of of lighter feathers in between so yeah this is mostly white man there's like a little speck here and there okay oh and this top part should be more the top part of the head should be more colored in too Okay, the tail of the fish is also pretty dark, so I'm going to add more ink down there. Alright, now time for the puppy. And it's cool, this puppy reference, I mean, I picked it actually because, I mean, maybe subconsciously I picked it for more reasons, but consciously I picked it because I loved the way the legs were just really flying, like really flying off the ground. But the coloring of this dog is also goes really well with the Osprey, so. Mm, interesting, it reminds me of Frightful from my side of the mountain. What's that? I have not heard of that before. I don't even know if it's a game or a book. Mmm, sip of lemonade. Okay, so this puppy, I'm not going to copy its markings super, super exactly, but I do like the idea how it's got like light and dark patches, just like the bird part of this griffin. So I'm just going to add some ink, bring it out, and then the feet are also, like the griffin, the feet are light colored. Is it? Oh, we're exactly on time. Perfect. I was like, hmm, well, what can I do now? Because I was feeling like I finished the inking and maybe I was going to add some details, but we're exactly on time. 
Yay! Okay, so let me just write what I usually write on my pictures. So this was, let me double check, Catch. Yes. Inktober 52. Boom, boom, Catch. It's interesting. I just realized because it, it's catching a fish, but you can call something that you caught your catch. So that's cool. I didn't even think about that until this very minute. 17 of August, 2023. Man, I'm pretty happy with this one. I love ospreys. They're so, they're so beautiful. <laughs> Oh, it's a kid's book. Wolf says, a kid's book. Kid runs away, lives in the woods, takes a falcon from his mom's nest, trains it to hunt for him. Love that book series. Is interesting? Well, I'll look, I'll look into it. Let me copy. I'm going to copy this. Copy. I'm going to put it into a tab right now. So I can look at it while my video uploads after I'm done here. <laughs> Cool. I've never heard of that before. I will look into it. Oh, you are welcome. Thank you for joining me. Exley says, thank you for the stream. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yep, that's right. Uh, tomorrow I will be back because it's Friday, so I'll be back with a normal stream. Chibi Friday, we're going to continue working on Chibi Pinhead. I decided to call him Penny McPinhead to get over the, <laughs> the Twitch restriction on the word pinhead so we're gonna work on Penny McPinhead tomorrow so hopefully I see you then um either way have a great rest of your day thank you for watching <laughs>